All right. So good to have you guys here. So good to see you guys. Uh, we need to be uh, praying over a couple things I forgot to mention. One is uh, uh, Adam Clark. Uh, we're praying over his ankle. Uh, that it is just a sprain and that that's going to be able to heal. Uh, I think he, uh, <clears throat> I think he was in the middle of a, uh, a basketball game and a football game broke out, I think maybe or something. I think it's what we're going to kind of get the word, uh, the other night. So we're going to pray for, uh, for his ankle and be healed. And we also, uh, one other thing I didn't mention is, uh, I think we got a new baby here today. Yay, we got a baby. Everybody quiet, quiet, golf clap, baby clap. Come on, clap, we got a baby here. All right, very good. We're not going to have her stand up, but Taffeta's over there. Beautiful baby, everything's okay with the baby? Very good. All right, beautiful baby girl. So go over and just grab her from her later and just run around, and it'll be great. It'll be fantastic. We love babies. So, all right, very, very good. Uh, today, uh, the notes and everything are in you version. And uh, and if you if you have that on your phones and you know the drill, it's you version events. Uh, at the bottom of that, there's also some announcements and notes. And Tony's giving the announcements. Not going to redo do those, but uh, at the very bottom, he mentioned that uh, that there's a reading plan out on the wall for those of you that uh, have a uh, an actual book Bible and don't use the don't use the you version or apps or something like that or a Kindle or anything to read your Bible. Um, but th- we have the printout versions there, but on the very bottom of the notes here today, and you always, I would encourage you to save your notes before we end here. I think at 1230 they go into the abyss. Uh, but at the very bottom is the reading plan that, that we have just kind of been going through or that we're going through as a church. If you have your own reading plan, God love you. Do it. I mean, it's great. It's not. I mean, we're not like tying you into this, uh, but basically, this is just. It's a 31 day trial to see of of you guys being able to walk through. And I think um, I think now we're in uh, uh, Luke something 14, 15, something like that. I think been have read several chapters in Daniel uh, at this point and and a book of the Psalms. So I just want want to encourage you to do that. There's there's that that's if you're looking for habits. You know how to get rid of a habit? You replace it. I mean, easy you don't do it, but you replace it. You put something in its place because you get used to doing something. And so a way to do it, if maybe you you, you, repl- you can replace something that you were doing with the habit of reading the Bible and taking a few moments in prayer. And I would encourage you, don't just read the Bible and just go through, okay, I checked it off. But say, oh, Holy Spirit, would you please reveal something to me? Here, that's going to be real important when we get into Leviticus uh, and we get into uh, Numbers and uh, Deuteronomy and stuff. And when we get into that kind of thing, you're like, oh, he begat him and they begat them and they begat them. I don't know the names. You're spitting on yourself, reading Mephibosheth and all the stuff. You know, you're doing that. It's going to be real important, but the Holy Spirit's going to be able to, to reveal some things to you during those times. I know of a, of a, a minister one time that they called him kind of out of the blue. He's at this meeting and kind of wanted to sit back. Because, you know, when doctors go on vacation or go away from the ch- go away from their hospitals, they don't go and do surgery somewhere else. But sometimes ministers, when you go somewhere else, are like, stand up and give a word. And you're just like, ah, oh, I just want to go to the beach today. You know, that's what came to church. But they, they asked him to come up and, and read a scripture. And he said, honestly, I was in a bad mood. I had a bad attitude. And I thought, I'll show them. And he got up and read a chapter out of Numbers. And it was so and so, you know, begat so and so, and so and so begat so and so, and so and so. And he said, I read it. I was feeling really good about myself. And I said, got to the very end of it. I shut my Bible and went back and sat down. And he said, I was feeling like there. That'll teach them. I know none of you have ever had a that to teach them moment. But he said, and this is a good friend of mine. He said, he said, as I was sitting back down in my chair, God said, you know why I put them in the Bible? And he said, no. And he said, because they matter to me. And he said, in that moment, I took something that I thought was trivial and I thought that would just, I could just get through. And he said, God had a purpose for having them in the scriptures, that they mattered to him. It's not the sermon today, but I just thought about that. As we're reading through the Bible, realize that everything that's in there matters to God. So we're going to talk about, if you'll turn your Bibles to uh, uh, to Mark, then James, then Matthew. 
in, in reverse order. So there you go, all right? Uh, go, to, go to Mark, then go to James, and then go to Matthew, and, and hold fingers in the, the Mark and, and James. But I, I'm going to be reading uh, three different passages, uh, and they're short passages. And I want to talk today, for the few moments that we have, uh, I want to talk about the idea of resolve. We made mention of New Year's resolutions. I am not a man of many New Year's resolutions. I don't generally make a lot of them, uh, not because I feel like I'm perfect, uh, but it's it's a it's a new year, and I tend to to think of where the new year's going and all that kind of stuff. I have a tendency to not uh, make a lot of, a lot of resolutions. Some people do, and that's cool. But I want I want to talk about resolve today, the idea of of resolve. So do you have that? I didn't see anybody turning, so I'm just going to assume that you're going to trust me in the Scriptures, or you're also going to look up here. So we're going to look at the idea of resolve. Matthew 5. I didn't tell you where to go. Maybe that's why you're confused. Matthew 5. It's a big book. Verse 33 says this. You have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, and by the way, this is Jesus' words. In mine, it's black and white just because I typed it in, but it's but it's they're in red and they're this is Jesus' words, so it's kind of an important thing. So you've heard it, you've heard it told, you must not break your vows, you must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Now obviously I don't think Jesus was talking about the wedding vows, the marriage vows. I don't, I don't think he's talking about that. But just listen. He said, don't make any vows. Do not say by heaven because heaven is God's throne. Do not say by the earth because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head for you can't turn one hair white or black. Now, actually, you can do that. I realize everybody's, no, no, wait a minute, you know, just for men. I can do that, you know, just a little bit. Holly has threatened me at some time I'm going to wake up with with less uh, gray in my hair at some point. So if I ever come in with orange or red hair, it's Holly did it, all right? So I just want you to know. So you can't turn one hair white or black, meaning you can't change your age, you can't do those kind of things. And here's what he says in verse 37. Just say a simple Yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. Now, move forward a little bit of time later, and outside of the realms after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and go to the book of James. James chapter 5, conveniently enough, not, not because Matthew was in Matthew 5, but just in James chapter 5. And here's what it says in James chapter 5. Verse 12, but most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes and no so that you will not sin and be condemned. Now, the, the purpose here is not, not that we, we don't make promises, but it, it is to be a person of your word without all the other stuff around it. That, that, oh my goodness, I can't go back on my word because I swore to God on my deathbed or something. Okay? It's not, it's not that. That's what, that's what God is saying. I don't, I don't want you to do. It's what Jesus is saying. This is not what I want you to do. I don't, I don't want you to say, you know, you know, on, I, I, I just sounded weird. Okay, I, I don't. I don't want you to say, you know, by on my mom's grave. I don't want you to say, you know, uh, if there's a God in heaven. I don't want you to declare, you know, on my life. I don't want you to do that kind of thing because what God is saying here, what Jesus was saying to them, is is that those those are those are things that are beyond you. And He said, here's what I want you to do. I just simply want you to say yes, and I simply want you to say no. I don't you say I promise. Now we know the the uh, the admonition in the scriptures is also not just to say yes, but to also if if we're going to be accurate and you don't have to. This is not a legalistic thing, but always with the idea that as God allows, and and that's not just to give you an out, but but it says you know don't say I'm going to go here and don't say I'm going to go there, but say if the Lord wills, this is what I would do. But it's it's saying be a man, be a woman of your word. That when you say something, you mean it. 
It's, it's, it's not just, I'm on my deathbed and it's a deathbed promise that God, if you do this for me, I'll, I'll give this money. God, if, if, if all this happens, but just simply let your yes be yes and your no be yo, no. Now don't say by heaven, don't say by earth, don't say by any of those things, by the hair on my head or my chinny chin chin or whatever it is that we're gonna do. do. You're just gonna say, I, I, I'm gonna do this. And, and I will not do this. And have you ever had the conversation? I've had the conversation with someone and they'd say, are you going to do this? And I would say, yes. And, and they would say, do you promise? <laughs> no, no, I don't promise. I was just lying to you. You caught me. You know, one of those kind of things. That's sometimes what it feels like. Or maybe you've told people, have you, and maybe you've said this and you don't mean it like it is, but you're telling some, you say, well, to be honest, and, and do this. That means you're not honest the other times. That means that every other time you've lied to our faces. And so we know that if you ever say to be honest. And, and we get caught up in those kind of things sometimes. And, and what he's just saying here, and again in James 5, most of all, never take an oath by heaven and earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no. And it's saying you're setting yourself up to a whole lot of other things. And actually, he's talking about your resolve. He's talking about your word that you speak, and when you say something, you mean it. Now, we know also through the Scriptures we should not be so quick to say yes or no because we're going to be held accountable for the things that we say yes or no to. Have you ever said yes to something and afterwards you realize you shouldn't have said yes to and you had to go ahead and follow through because you wanted to be a man or a woman of your word? Those are horrible times because you, because you don't do it with a good attitude. You, you do it and you're mad at the people around. You're mad at yourself. And what was I doing? And why did I say no? And why? I've had to do that as a pastor sometimes. And, and I've been in situations where, where because, you know, I wanted to say no. I wanted to say no. I wanted to say no. No, I don't want to say no. And, and as I'm saying, I'm going to say no to this one. I'm going to say no to this. And as I, as it's coming out of my mouth, no somehow supernaturally, miraculously changes to yes. And I think, why, God, did you make me say yes? Why do you say yes? And then I have to deal with, well, this is a good opportunity to minister and all that. No, God, I just wanted to say no. But you say yes, and you regret it at the end. But you got to keep going. Why? Because you're a man or a woman of your word. Your words matter. Mark chapter 11. Mark 11, verse 23. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. We've got two passages, one from the words of Jesus and one from the writer James, inspired by the Holy Spirit that tell you don't make a vow on heaven and earth or anything like that, but I just simply want you to let your yes be yes and your no be no. And then later on, the words of Jesus that is written down by the, uh, by the writer Mark that would just simply tell us that if you say to this mountain, if you say, if you speak something and say to this mountain, and if you believed, it will be moved. That's, a, that's an awesome passage of Scripture. And, and sometimes maybe we take that and say, well, I don't know if he meant that. Did he really mean a mountain? Did he mean this? All kinds of stuff. And yes, in the end, we, we begin to understand that, yes, we can say to the problems that we have, it doesn't have to be a physical mountain, that we can say to the problems that we have, be gone or, or declare things over them, and it will happen. But it's also the idea of Jesus said to this mountain, seats of power that stood on the mountain, to high places that are on the mountains, and you can declare specifically to this mountain that they be moved, and Jesus said they be moved. So I want to talk about... I resolve today. These verses tells us that, that our words matter. Your words matter. They carry weight. It, uh, uh, listen, I, I, I don't get caught up in, in, in a lot of the stuff that some people get caught up about our words and, and things. I do believe our words matter, but I've had people, uh, you know, I, I've, they've asked, how are you doing? I was like, well, I'm not really feeling that well. 
You know, I'm kind of sick. Don't say that. Don't say that. You're speaking curses. Over. No, I've got a cold. And I don't feel that well. And I'm just declaring I don't feel that well. That doesn't mean that I want to not feel well. It doesn't. I'm not speaking things over my life. My nose is runny. I have a fever. It's the worst in the world because it's happening to me. And so I'm just telling you. So don't think, oh, my goodness, I can't. Oh, I don't have any money in my wallet. Don't say that. Oh, the word just came out. I've just declared bankruptcy on my life. That's not what it means, all right? Some people get real weird with the word kind of thing but the bible tells us clearly that your words matter and your words carry weight and you will actually the bible also says be accountable for every idle word that comes out of your mouth it's one of the things it's maybe a good time to do it because uh, again not not in a mystical way but in a very real way your words matter and your words carry weight I talk to people over and over again. I, I see interviews with people. I study about people and read books from people who have had things declared over them and spoken to them when they were young. And they are adults and are still dealing with the fact that someone in their past told them they would not amount to anything. That someone spoke hurtful words. I've, I've talked about the power of the tongue before and I don't want to uh, just re-preach that part of it. But again, the old saying that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is said from a person who has never had hurtful words spoken to them. Words matter. Your words carry weight. It's a great time because at the beginning of the year, we resolve to do a lot of things. That we're going to eat like crazy people, and then we're going to give up all the good things that God has given us, like sugar and, and stuff. And that's, that's crazy. That's insane talk. But, but we declare that we're going to do that. We resolve we're going to do that. We resolve that we're, going to, that we're going to work out more. We resolve that we're going to read the Bible more. We do those kind of things around this time. And there's always the haters. You're not going to read more. You're not going to do it. If you're going to do it, you should have started before. You know, all those kind of haters. Haters are going to hate and all that kind of stuff. But, but we resolved to do a lot of things. We resolved that we're going to do a whole lot more. And I want to tell you that New Year is known for resolutions, but really sometimes our resolutions, our things that we resolve to do is really more about wishes. It's really more about fantasy. It's really more about things that we really wish we're going to do. I really wish I could be in better weight. I really wish that I could have, be in better shape. I, I really wish that, that I could have more money. I really wish uh, that I would have, uh, by the end of the year, be able to read through the Bible. I really wish that my walk with God would be great. I really just kind of wish. And sometimes we say they're resolutions, but resolutions means you have resolve. Resolutions mean it is something that is firm. It is standing to be resolute means that it's not going to move, that you declare that this thing will be. And it is a declaration that will not change. And come all the forces of hell against it, it is not going to happen. And when we're a week and a half into it and we've had five brownies when we declared we were going to have none, that is more of a wish than it is a resolve. And has anybody ever been there a week or so into the new year? It's more about wishes than it is about resolve. I want to tell you that your words matter. Your words matter. And sometimes we get through the end and say, well, if this would have happened, and, and but this happened, and all those kind of things. And there's a saying that I say a lot uh, to Holly, and we, we love this saying. I think Don Meredith said it, Dandy Don Meredith, who was a football player for the Cowboys a bunch of years ago. And he, and he quoted it from someone else, and, and some of you may know the saying. Uh, we say, if this would happen, but that happened, we do all those kind of things. And my saying is this, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a good Christmas. We all have ifs and buts. We all have things that we say, if this would happen, but this happened. We all make excuses. We all do those kind of things. You see, here's the question is, today, this new year, today, this January 8th, today, not, not for the rest of the month, not for any of the other time, but today, what are you resolved to do? What have you decided today that you're going to do to make things better between you and God? What have you resolved to do that you're going to start today and be more of a witness for God, to live out your Christian life a little bit better? Because that's why we're here, right? You're not just here to check off boxes. You're here so that you can be filled with the Spirit. You're here that you can have the Word imparted into you. You're here so that you can be with, with other like-minded believers because when you're here, God has promised to be here. And when God shows up, He demands that you do something. He demands that you accept Him and take Him in. And so in this time, I'm going to ask, what are you resolved to do? What are you resolved to change in your life? What, are, what have you come here today to be, to become? 
What have you come here today to have God take care of? Those are the resolves that are in your life. And, and you can think, well, if this happened, if the heat was more, if the heat was less, if the song was sung, if the pastor was better, if any of those kind of things, again, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, a lot of things would be different. What have you resolved to do today? What have you come in here today and you said... I'm going to let my yes be yes. I'm going to come in here today, and when I say, God, I'm coming into this house, and when I prayed, maybe I just repeated the words of the pastor and said, God, I welcome you in this place. God, my yes is yes today, and I welcome you in this place. That, that maybe when I say, God, would you just, would, would you change everyone in here? That let that start with me, and I'm going to let my yes be yes. My resolve today, when, when I declare, when I'm, when I feel bad about about how I treated my wife, when I feel bad about the relationship with my kids, when I feel bad about something happened at work and I'm driving away and my gut's churning and the Holy Spirit's speaking to me and and trying to teach me and trying to guide me and 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 spanking me a little bit and 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 saying, you know, you you shouldn't have done that and 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 this was something you need to change. And I'm feeling bad about it in the moment. I say, you know what, I'm gonna be a better husband. I'm gonna be a better dad. I'm gonna be a better mom. I'm gonna be a better wife. I'm going to be a better believer. I'm going to be a better witness. These talents that are on the inside of me, I'm going to change them. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm not going to hold them back anymore. I'm going to step out. I'm going to take a chance. When you're driving in the car and you're all by yourself and you're declaring these things, can I help you today? Let your yes be yes. When you make a declaration, it matters. When you speak something out, and I would even say that as you think things out, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart and the mind are connected. What is on the inside of you is really what's happening to you, not what everyone else sees. So as you begin to think things, as you begin to dream things, as you begin to to to, to ponder these things and pray these things, let your yes be yes. Not the promise, well, I've got to keep it because I was on my deathbed. No, just because you declared it, just because you said it, let it mean something. There is something about taking the pomp and the promises out of all the things that you do and to just do what you're supposed to do. Not just win the moment. I feel, listen, I, I, uh, I, I love conferences. I love, I love going and being around thousands of people to worship. This last week, uh, Passion Conference, a lot of young adults were there and they're worshiping God. There's thousands and, and I see them tweet and I see them post. My life will never be the same. It's going to be different from here on out. But then I see these same people and they go back to their lives and life happens and things wind up being the same. And it's not just young people. We do it in any time when there's an emotional song, an emotional service. I would tell you there's something about getting in the thick of things. And when the music's not playing and the thousands aren't around and the lights aren't shining and everybody's okay with it and everybody's, uh, you know, cheering you on when you just get down to where life happens to get rid of all of the noise, to get rid of all of the praise, to get rid of all of the other stuff and just say, God, I have resolved and my yes will be yes, and I will declare that this mountain will be moved before me, and not because I promise it on heaven or promise it on my life or not because I feel guilty, but God, my words matter. And when I go to bed at night and I declare that my family is going to be safe, my family will be safe because my yes is yes. When I get up in the morning, I determine that I'm not going to be easily offended. When I determine that I am going to step out and do what I'm called to do. When I determine that I'm not going to let there be excuses over my life anymore. I am going to let my yes be yes. And it will matter, not just in the mystical sense, not just so I feel better, But when I go out and declare that I'm a child of the king and I am on an assignment of God, my destiny is heaven, but my assignment is to see the kingdom of God come here on this earth. And as I go out and begin to do that in my life and declare that God is with me and declare that God is good and declare that God can change, I will see something happen because I have resolved to see it so. That's what it means to be able to declare and let your yes be yes. To be a man or woman of of your word. That's what it means. What are you resolved to do? What are you resolved to do? You see, there will always be excuses. You know what excuses are? They're things you make up to not do something. Excuses. There will always be excuses. There will always be ifs. There will always be buts. 
there will be always these things that we can make excuses of. We're too tight. We're too, I, I could go a list. Oh my goodness, I could go on a list of the excuses. Excuses, excuses, excuses. There will always be excuses. And can I tell you this though, to help you out? Maybe make you feel better about falling through the cracks sometimes? There will sometimes be reasons. There will always be excuses. Excuses are stuff you make up. There will, all, there will sometimes be reasons. There's sometimes you're going and you're trying to go and your car won't start. It just won't happen. There's sometimes, I remember one time I was headed over to one of uh, Jonah's football games and uh, and I was headed over to that, and I and we we make an effort to to be at everything that our kids are doing, and, and you know and, and that kind of thing. And I remember driving to one of the football games, and uh, and I was driving. I drove up through Spring City and was going up on the mountain. I got to the top of the mountain. The little gas station's not there any, anymore, but the little gas station's right there. And my tire blew. And I thought, oh, man, and it was cold, and I got out, and it was dark, and I'm searching around for a flashlight, and I'm going out, and I go, and I'd never changed the tire in this in the Yukon before, and I had like a 25,000-step process to go through of doing this and putting these things together, and I'm in the dark, and I'm kind of doing this. I'm like, I'm changing a tire. This is not rocket science, but I, I found where the little slot was. I had to go in and turn things down. I did all that, and I got it all out, and I got all the stuff, and I said, whew, and I took the tire iron, and I tried to put it in, and I don't know if you've seen our Yukon, but somebody's put these hoopty rims on it, and, and they're and they're odd, and so, and when we get, you know, it's real tinted and hoopty rims, and we get out, and it's like a family of five, and we're like, hey, y'all, and then nobody knows that we're getting out, and so, but I go, and I, and I shove the tire iron in, and it doesn't fit, and, and, I'm, and I'm like, what, what in the, what's going on, what's, you know, and, and if it doesn't fit, you must have quit, you know, you must stop that moment, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm sitting here and I can't, I can't change the tire. I know how to change, and it won't fit. And so I'm standing there for a while. So I had to call Holly and, and I was like, get my socket set and bring it up and we're going to try that. And we did. And so now I carry a, uh, uh, I believe it's a, a, a 13 millimeter, uh, socket in my car wherever I go because that's what fits on my hubs. And so I did that. There's reasons. I couldn't, I couldn't be there. It wasn't an excuse. It was a reason. It was something real that happened. There will always be excuses. There will sometimes be reasons, and there are things that are real. So for the excuses, can I help you? Stop it. And as much love and understanding and compassion I can give you, quit making excuses. Everybody's got them. Everybody. If it helps you at all, there's a lot of nights I don't go to bed before 2. I live tired. Not your problem. I'm just telling you, there's always excuses. Sometimes there'll be reasons. So if it's for the excuses, I just want to encourage you to stop making them. And if there's reasons, I want to encourage you, push past them. Realize that every reason that comes up that is an obstacle for you doing what you have said you're going to do and declaring things and living in that declaration for every reason that comes up, see it as an opportunity for God's glory to be demonstrated. See it as an opportunity for God to be able to come up and show himself strong because a great testimony is at the end of a day when you have said yes and the world said no, but you got to do the yes anyway because God blew up that wall he turned everything around, and he accomplished what he set out to accomplish in your life. That is an incredible testimony, so push past the reasons. Whatever the reasons are that say that you can't, push past them. If you're yes and yes, and your words carry weight, which I believe that they do, and when you say something, it matters, which is why we need to be careful what we declare over people and what we say. But if your yes is yes, and your words carry weight, then there needs to be two things about your resolves. You need to make sure that your resolves matter. Have you ever drawn a line and you realize later that was a stupid line to draw? <laughs> With your kids, you made a declaration and then you had to stand to it because I'm the parent and I can't be seen as going back on my word and you made some sort of stupid kind of thing. It was like, no, and, and you, you thought about it later and it's like, well, it really should be yes. What do I do? Do I go back on my word and you had those kind of parental kind of things? I want you to make your resolves matter. In life, pick your battles. 
Pick the things that you're going to wage war over. Pick the things that you're going to fight for. I'm going to tell you this. As a man who, who one of the things that is in my past and one of the things that God has delivered me from and continues to deliver me from is as a man who has believed and lived his life, I am like Jacob who the Bible, when the angel came down and fought with him, says you have fought with man and God in one. That sometimes I understand as a man, as a person who has walked around and, and in my past has maybe had a chip on my shoulder and in my past has been willing to fight and engage in the battle where there was none. I'm going to tell you one of the best things that you can do is learn to pick your battles. Learn that not everything is a fight. Learn that not everything is worth you putting any effort into. Learn that. There's going to be some people who will suck you dry. You cannot let them. Not everything and not every issue is worth you fighting for. It's not worth. You need to begin to pick your battles. In your life, pick your battles. In your declarations, pick your mountains to move. When you begin to declare some things, the Bible says, and I know maybe it's the, it's the wording and the hermeneutics of it and, and studying how the words work in the Greek and the, the Hebrew and the scriptures and sometimes our translations don't really fit everything that was really said in the scriptures. But the specific wording of Jesus' words in Mark said, if you say to this mountain... A specific mountain, not just God. It's, it's, the, it's the unspoken request. God, would you just help somebody somewhere in some way and do something for them in the general worldview of things? Amen. That's a hard prayer to pray. But yet when it gets specific, when it's your child, when it's your job, when it's your marriage, when it's your issue, God, this mountain that's before me. I don't pick out every mountain. I'm not worried about every mountain. Somebody else can fight the, the battle for that mountain over there. This mountain is in front of me. And God, I'm going to let my yes be yes, and I'm going to pick this mountain as my battlefield. Because in life, pick your battles. In your direct declarations, pick the mountain. Pick the thing that you want God to move. He said, let your yes be yes, because it matters what you say and he said when you say the words when you declare to this mountain and do it believing it will move in the name of Jesus what's your mountain what's your thing that you hadn't been able to get over what's your thing that you've been fighting with from year and year year to year I would encourage you that there's some things that you can discipline out of your body. And there are other things that need, you need to be delivered from out of your spirit. And some of those things, if you say, I've always fought this, my family has fought this, my dad was like this, my mom was like this, my grandparents are like that, it could very well be that there is something that, that, that you need to be delivered from in your spirit. And it could very well be that no matter how many resolutions you make and how many words you speak and how many seminars you go to, you'll never be able to to get over it until you take it to Jesus who is able to overcome everything that is happening in your life. And there's other things in your life that you just need to discipline yourself, that you just need to determine I'm not going to. I'm just going to determine that I'm going to stop. I'm going to determine that if it hurts when I do this, is the old joke, I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to stop doing the things that have been a battle over my life. I'm going to declare that this mountain is going to be moved in the name of Jesus. I want to ask you, the mountains that are before you, the things that you want to do, the goals, the dreams that you have, are they your dreams, are they your goals, or is they God's, God's goals? I want to be the best this. Well, that may be a great thing, but is that what God has for you? I want to do this one thing, and I'm going to make it happen. That may be great, but are you leaving everything else behind in order to make that happen? And everything else behind is what God has for you, and that thing you're making happen is just a distraction. I want you to make sure that your resolves matter. I want to make you to make sure that you don't curse the very blessing that God has given you. That people would, I'm praying for a job and they get the job and now this job, it won't let me go to church anymore. And so you begin to curse the job. It's taking too much time and really it's probably not that it won't let you go to church. It's that you go to the job and now the only time that you can spend family time is the time that you should be in church with everybody else and worshiping God. And now you take God's time to do your time because your time is taken up with something else that God never meant for you to have and the whole thing begins to work. Have you ever been there? I've been there where I've allowed things to be excuses and allowed things to be reasons and God didn't have them for me in the first place and they didn't matter and I fought for them and I got them and it took me away from everything that God wanted me to have. I want to encourage you today that you don't have to do that. Make sure your resolve matters. Is it God's resolve or is it your dream and your goal? I want to ask you, how big's your story? How big is the thing that you want to do? 
some of us live boring, defeated lives. And if that's not bad enough, we try to put God's name on it. Well, this is just the cross God has for us to bear. He's just called us not to be able to move forward, and that's just not God. And we have boring lives and boring stories, and we're not moving forward, and we try to tell people, well, we serve a God who's awesome. Then why is our life so boring? And I'm not trying to tell you that God is going to give you boats and cars and all that kind of stuff. He may, and if he does, that's great. And call me in the summer, and I'll go out with you. It'll be great. All right, fantastic. But here's the deal. I'm telling you that God has an exciting story for you and living for God should not be boring and living for God should not be humdrum. And God wants you to begin to pick the resolves that matter. Take God's story. And when God has declared it, his yes really is yes. And he can declare on heaven and he can declare on earth and he can declare by his name and it will be done because his yes is yes and his no is no. And when God declares that the mountains will be moved, they will be moved. So pick God's story and make your resolves matter. Don't give your life for something at the end of the day you would wish you hadn't spent a lot of time doing. Start now. Start now making it matter. The things of God matters. Everything else is just fluff. It's like I tell people at weddings. I've told this story before. I tell people before. It's like, look, here's what has to happen. You have to say I do. You have to say I do. I have to say you are. Everything else is fluff. It's pretty fluff. We celebrate the fluff. We love the fluff. But it's fluff. It doesn't matter. What's the stuff that doesn't matter in your life? Would you resolve to do something that matters in your life? And not only do we make the resolve matter, but the last thing is this. We've got to make, make the resolve stick. It's got to stick. We can say a lot of stuff when, when, when it's all coming down on us, and we can declare a lot of stuff, but then when everything else happens, are we really going to follow through? Are we really going to follow through? with giving up that thing, with starting that thing. It may even matter. And God may have called you to do something great. And can I, can I tell you that unless, and, and, unless you, you, don't, you don't have to be known by anybody else in the world, but unless you're moving forward in what God has placed on the inside of you to do, unless you're moving forward in that, you will never live a fulfilled life. But I'm going to tell you, you don't have to be the most famous person in the world. But if you begin to step out and move forward in what God has called you to do, fulfillment will be there regardless of what anybody else knows or sees. So you've got to make it stick. Your words carry weight. Jesus was telling them, without making any other promises or guarantees, just let your word carry weight. Which means your prayers over your family don't have to include 52,000 words and speak out of the King James and spit all over yourself and all kinds of stuff in the middle of the thing. You don't have to yell. You don't have to crumble. You don't have to do anything. You just begin to declare and you make it stick. And your words are going to carry weight. It's why it's important to get God's heart over any issue. God, what are you saying and what are you doing? And you begin to speak God's heart. And the weight of God is now behind you. And that's an amazing thing. Matthew 5, 34. Do not say by heaven because heaven is God's throne. And do not say by the earth because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head for you can't turn one hair white or black. What is that? These are all things that are out of your hands. Don't be pushed aside by the things that are out of your hands. Don't be dissuaded by the things that are out of your hands. Well, that person has to come through and that person, it doesn't matter what that person has to do or will not do because you're not declaring things based on heaven or earth that you have no control over. You're declaring there are things that are out of my hands, God, so I put them in your hands and I'm not going to be dissuaded and I'm not going to be deterred by the things that are out of my hands. But also what you need to know, you, you, listen, you cannot give more power to that thing that is out of your hands than you give to God. But my boss is out to get me. Don't give more power to your boss than you give to God. But my husband, my wife, don't give more power to them than you give to God. But this doctor, this disease, do not give more power to that than you give to God. 
There are things that are out of your hands. Do not be dissuaded by them. Do not be deterred by them. Do not turn your back because of them. You cannot let things that are out of control stop you from what God is in control of. And you've got to begin to move forward and do it anyway. There are things that are out of your hands. Don't be dissuaded by them. But God has also put things in your hands. Do not be limited by them because you are lazy about them. Get to work doing what God has called you to do. When you make a resolve, there's going to be a bunch of things that are out of your hands, but there's going to be something that's in your hands. What is in your hands? What has God given you to do? What is the thing that when you do it, it bubbles up on the inside of you? I would venture to say that as long as that does not contradict the Word of God, then that probably is your calling. That probably is your gift. That probably is your talent. So you begin to take that thing that is on the inside of you. And while all the world is telling you no, You say, God, you're bigger than all those things. Now what is in my hands? I'm not going to be lazy anymore about it. I'm not going to be complacent about what you've given me. All the talks, all the stuff of what I'd like to see and what i like to do, it's just talk and stuff. So now something that's in your hands and you do what you can with what you have. You go out and you reach one. You go out and you start the process. You begin and do what you know to do. And I would declare to you, as you begin to act on the things that God has placed in your spirit, you will do what you can do and then God will do what he can do and you'll be able to get past all the obstacles in your life and you're declaring not if this happens not when that happens not if all this stuff would come into alignment but my yes is yes and I resolve that this mountain will be moved in the name of Jesus and as you begin to declare that and walk forward and what you have the ability to do with no more excuses with no more reasons that have stopped you but you begin to declare and do it, you're going to see some awesome things happen. God fills you with the dream. He fills you with the ability. And He also, if we'll believe the Scriptures, that He makes the road straight before us. That's an awesome thing that we have in God. So why would we ever give up? Why would we ever not have resolve? Why would we ever not complete what God has put out for us to complete? Why would we stop? Because we're tired? Because it's hard. Because we don't understand. Those are all reasons. Those are all excuses. But you cannot let them stop you. Let your yes be yes. I want to declare to you today that you need to begin to speak life over the resolve that matters to God. When you begin to find out, God, this is what you have for me, and I may not see any way that this can happen, but I'm going to speak life to it. Because my yes is yes. And my word moves mountains. One of my favorite passages in the scriptures found in James chapter 5 uh, after, after this. And, and, and when it begins to say that Elijah declared that there would not be rain for such and such a time. And it did not rain. And Elijah declared that now there would be rain. And there was rain. You know what's right before that? It says Elijah was a man just like you. And he declared and it was so. What do you need to speak life over? What have you been what have you been cursing? The things that God has blessed in your life, what have you been cursing? What the, what God declares is yes and amen, so I will declare yes and amen over the things that God declares. What God is blessing, I will not curse. How how many times have you have you spoken out against a job, against family, against a situation? And say, he's always going to be like this. He's always, it's always going to be this way. I can never get over this. How many times have you done that? I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to put, put a, um, a cloud over you and think, man, I do that all the time and I'm doomed. It's not that. I'm trying to make you aware that what you say matters. It matters just as much as what you do. And as you would begin to declare life over the things in your life, if you would begin to declare life over the resolves that you have made, I'm going to get in better shape. And I'm going to do it, not so I can look better, not so I can even just feel better, but I'm going to do it because, God, you said my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you the best to be able to live in. God, I'm going to be a better husband, not just so my wife can stop 
stop complaining. I'm going to be a better wife, not just so my husband can do this or that. I'm going to do it because my marriage is your glory, because by my salvation you will save my family. I declare life over my children. I declare life over my husband and wife. I'm going to go out and, and, and I feel sad about the people living at different places in this land. Well, God begins to bubble something up, and instead of driving down certain roads and say, well, they probably put themselves in it. They probably on drugs. They probably have done this and that. Begin to declare life over the areas of this city that need to be ministered to. Begin to declare life over the governments that are around us. And you may not have voted for someone or may have voted for something. Do not speak curses over it. You speak life. Why? Because your words carry weight. And when you pick a resolve that matters, and God is God over the governments, and God is God over the education, and God is God over the world and the systems and entertainment and all that, He is God over all of it. So when we resolve that the mountains will be moved in the name of Jesus and we resolve to speak over the things we determine that we're going to speak life and not curses anymore over our family over our friends over our jobs over our churches nothing's ever going to be perfect you just speak life over the things that are around you and the mountains will be moved in Jesus name your words matter I'm not a pastor it doesn't matter you're a child of the king Wherever you go, you carry the authority of the kingdom with you. It matters what you say. I want you to pick the resolves that matter. God's already given them to you. I believe it. I, I, if we had time and we do not, I could point out you, to you the things that God has probably placed before you. Those things matter. And I don't, I don't want to sit down and sit back. And I don't want to live my life at the end of 2017 and say, man, all these regrets of things that I was able to do but didn't do because of this and this and that. I don't want to have to repent on a weekly basis because I've blown it and spoke curses over the things that are in my life and the people that are in my life because I see things and, and it comes out not as prayer for help, but it comes out as just... Filth and vile in God's nostrils. I don't want to live a month from now and say, God, my marriage could be better if I would have just chosen to speak life. God, my kids could be better if I would have just spoke life over there. My church could be better. I don't, I don't want to live months after months after months. And I don't want you to live your life sitting in these chairs and thinking, that's good, I hear a message, and you leave here and nothing changes. I do not care if it has our church name on it. I care that you go out and do what God has called you to do and you make a resolve that you are not going to move and you are going to step forward and you are going to live your life resolving to do the things that God has blessed you with. You're going to speak life over them and the mountains in your life are going to move. That's what I want to see over you every single day. You want, you want the church to grow. You want your life to grow. You want your influence to grow. Just step out and do what God has called you to do. Speak life over it and watch how God works on your behalf. Take resolve to do that. What are you dreaming for? Is it big enough? Is it God's dream or your dream? If it's your dream, that may be good. But God's dream is great. That you can speak life over the things, but speak abundant life over the things in your life. Make a resolve that you are going to stick to. Make sure it matters. And make sure it sticks. Don't give up. Don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. Don't give up. The issue that has seemed too big to overcome is nothing compared to God's power over it. Don't give up. Don't give up. I want, I want us to stick again. I went longer. I'm trying to be shorter. I went longer. 42 minutes if anybody's counting. So here we go. I want you to stand in this place. And I want you to grab hold of the hands of the people who are next to you. We're going to resolve to be uncomfortable right here in this moment. Grab hands. Do you know them? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Squeeze those hands. What are you doing? Yep. 
and we're going to sing here in just a moment, but I want you to grab the hands of the people. If you don't know them, ask them their name. Matter of fact, just so there's no weirdness of somebody saying, I've been going here for a year and a half. You don't know my name. Every one of you, turn to the person next to you and say, tell me your name. There you go. All right, so this is good. This is great. We're going to take it all the name. I want a resolve that matters. Guess what? You just got one, possibly two. Because you're standing next to the child of God who he cares for. The person next to you that you just got their name, that's God's favorite. Think about that. You're also God's favorite. You matter. So in this moment, I want us to join together and I want us to pray with resolve. Let our yes be yes. And I want you to pray with resolve over the person that you just got their name on. You can pray for you. You can be selfish. Do that later. Now, pray for the person next to you. Pray that their resolves will matter. They will be God dreams and not their own dreams. Pray that they will see the the resolve stick that it will stick it will truly be resolved it will it will matter and it will stick that they're not going to give up and be weary and well doing just begin to pray over them right now just pray to God God let let, let John be able to be who he's called to be let let Lisa be who she's called to be let what's, what's the name Let Isaac, let Jonathan, let Jonah, let Holly, let them have a resolve that matters to pick the battles to fight and to leave all the other ones. And not to fight that they walk around with chips on their shoulders, but they realize this is important enough for me to give it my all and let that be and let it stick. God, I pray that they be men and women where their word carries weight. The promises are true, not on anything else, but just because when I say yes, I mean yes. That means they got to think it out and they got to be wise before they speak. But let their yes be yes and their no be no. And I pray that their, their declarations to move mountains will see the mountains begin to crumble. Yeah, yeah. Mountains flee in front of my family. Flee. (laughs) Flee. Mm. Now I told you, wait just a moment to be selfish. Now begin to pray for your resolve. God, would you make, would you make your dreams be huge in me? God, would you have your dreams be, be real in me? And when you open those things up and the things that you put on the inside of me, I declare that they will come to fruition. I declare that the mountains before me that stop me from being and doing, whether they're real or imagined, that the mountains be moved, they be tore down in the name of Jesus. Move them out of the way. I could climb you, but there's no need. Just move. Just get out of the way of the promise that God has for me. God, let me have wisdom to be able to think before I speak so that when I say yes, it's a yes. And when I say no, it's a no because that carries weight and authority. More than just an answer to a question, it carries things in the Spirit. My resolve this year is to be a man after your heart. To not settle for less than you have for me. And to lead this church to the place that it would be an influence, not just a presence, but an influence and an impact in this city. I pray that every finance, personally and corporately, that needs to be in our pockets comes so that we can accomplish what you have for us to accomplish. And we'll give you glory because we don't have the money. We don't have the ability to make the money enough to do all that you want this church to do. So it's going to be you no matter what comes in. So God, we give you glory for that. 
and we declare the mountains before us, the limited resources, the lack of, of help at times, complacency, apathy, all that. That's mountains, and it's moved in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. That our children will be influences in their schools, that our adults will be influences in their work, and that we'll all come out of who you are. I declare it today. falter we will not be defeated there may be hits and bruises and cuts and strains and tiredness but the excuses nor the reasons will keep us from doing and being what you have called us to do and who you have called us to be I declare life over this people I resolve that your word will accomplish what it is set out to accomplish and I declare today that the mountains before us will be moved. And I also declare today that we will stick to it. And we will see. And we will not be weary and well do. But our words will carry weight. And will change the atmosphere. You will be God. People will be changed. And our lives will be fulfilled in you. In Jesus' name, I declare that over this people. Make a resolve this year. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Find somebody. Hug them. I made you ask their name. Now you know their name. Hug their neck. Be sure to get those pieces of paper out in there that have the calendars. Just get one per family, and it has some dates coming up that we would like different groups to kind of get together and do some things. So 